We have to make a custom form tool to cut the threads in the Porsche 930 turbo fuel cap. Pretty awesome. Take a look. Here's the model of the threads that Sam made from the photo. You should take a look at that video. It's a pretty cool process how he did it. And what I've come up with is a form tool that we're gonna make in the Tormach CNC lathe, which makes it really easy. That's what's so cool about this. Just like so, do some sort of hacking to get a, some grinding and relief in there and then test her out. I was a wimp. I cut one of these as a sort of test dry run. And I think it's gonna work, which is super exciting, folks. So let's head over to the lathe. We'll talk at the end about some strategies, the CAD cam and, and more of that good stuff. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. We've got a piece of one and a quarter inch tool steel. Jog over here and we'll tighten down, set our Z. Jog over just a hair, set that to Z zero and should be good to go. We're doing a spot first. That'll give us a center point to drill in with our quarter inch twist drill. Then we'll come back and do a full uh, chamfer depth. I'll show you why the Fusion has some glitches in the lathe stuff, which we'll talk about at the end. When we were, uh, when we were facing this before, we were getting blue chips. That tells me the chip's getting so hot that the chip can't take all the heat away with it. So we slowed down our service feet for a minute, um, hopefully to just do a little bit better. We're, we're trying the fog buster here so that we can have better film footage. Uh, we'll see how that works and uh, probably not quite as good as flood coolant, but maybe worth it as you guys can see. When we did our test piece, putting this chamfer in it puts a lot of axial force on the part and it actually pushed the part back in a little in the three jaw, which I may not have had it uh, held, had holding it tight enough, but uh, hopefully this does a better job. But I, I, folks, I think this is really cool. I, this is like, we're creating custom tools and we're creating them easily. We're just taking a CAD model, pulling some data out of it, and walking over to a CNC lathe, I mean, this is freaking awesome. I, I, um, it's funny because as much as this should be a skilled labor type of skill, I, I think it's so cool that hopefully anyone watching this can realize how you can do this. This is awesome. We'll see how it works, but I think we're going to get it to work. Now we're using a GTN3 and a blade holder. I'm told that you've gotta be real careful. Just that cool line of hair here. You've gotta be real careful. Uh, these don't necessarily profile as well or handle radial loads. Again, we got along okay cutting the test piece. The, uh, I'm having an issue. We've actually been posting about it on some social media, Facebook and Instagram. I'm having an issue with getting proper outside radiuses with a parting tool in fusion. And, and we cut a couple of sample pieces. And here's what's throwing me off is that everyone's asking, oh, is the tool model correctly, the width, the radius, all that. Here's the thing, when I do it in sprut cam, it cuts it correctly, which has me thinking it's either a setting in fusion I have wrong or it's a glitch in fusion, which honestly, um, it, could, I, it really could be a glitch. I gotta say, I, I think the fog buster is working okay, really.
apparently these tools are called square shoulders, but uh, Jason actually over at Tormach was helping me out and said that they put one on an optical comparator and it actually did have a very, very slight radius, like 4,000, which will really matter here when you're doing profiling like this. So I very much care about that because I want to do it right as best we can. I also just want to see, does it work? That's the question. The part the, that this gets threaded into in the car is actually stamped uh, sheet metal, so it's pretty darn forgiving. And of course, the better off we get, more accurate we get it, the better, but I'm also, I'm interested in making it work, not getting hung up on the wrong thing. Raise your hand if you've ever forgotten to post the uh, most updated code that actually had the parting off in it. Honestly, that was the hardest part. Here's that thing I was telling you about though. If you take a close look, we have a flat spot at the tip of this and that may rule in it. I don't think so and we're just gonna continue on. I didn't wanna hop into Sprout Cam uh, to solve this. So next, what we gotta do, I don't trust the parting tool. Honestly, you probably could, but I wanna make sure we've got a good flat edge, surface grinder. If you're trying this at home or you don't have a service grinder, honestly, don't worry. It's not the most important thing. You could also use the face um, that was sort of the positive side that we faced off as your, uh, what's gonna seat up against the arbor that we're going to use to hold this if you were worried about having it uh, perpendicular to the cutter. We did this with an adaptive strategy here that's removing most of the material, but we're leaving both a little bit on the floor and on the sidewall. And as you can see here in the Fusion Cam, we'll do a horizontal to clean up that floor, and we'll do a real just simple 2D contour to clean up the side. Make our arbor, actually just gonna use a piece of three quarter inch aluminum. Uh, 
I know, people are saying it's sacrilegious because it's not going to be rigid enough, but I think it's going to be okay, and if it's not, we'll replace it with a piece of steel. I like to have feel this just to make sure you don't break a tap unnecessarily. Sometimes we'll power tap a little bit more aggressively though. So while that's actually still in there, let's grab our part and take a look. We may not tap deep enough. Nope, a little hair deeper there. I do want to use a bit of a good amount of thread length so we get as much engagement as possible. So that's the plan. Let's pin it though. I goofed. I, the answer is I really did just goof, but when we first, you saw the test footage, we were using this as a boring bar um, or holding it like a boring bar to cut the threads. And honestly, that's how I really wanted to use this tool for really one simple fact, which is that when it's cutting in a lathe, it's not an interrupted cut, so in my opinion, it's going to be easier to get a smooth finish, at least I think. It, it, there's just something beautiful about watching threads get cut on the lathe, but I'm getting more control from a cam standpoint from thread milling it, which is really important when it comes to this lead out, and it, it's easier for me to visualize in the simulation. We'll talk more about that in the Fusion Friday, but um, you, you could do it either way, but I goofed because Let's see here, I, I basically had to recut the other side here. Because I had it backwards. So if we held it, if we ran it in the lathe, it would be held like this. Actually, it would be, um, it would be upside down. Um, so it would be, well, maybe I really just did screw up. Um, basically, we needed to cut, I, I originally cut it this side. It needs to be on this side. This, this won't hurt a thing. So that's going to be our cutting edge when it rotates in our Tormach mill to thread mill the threads.
So we've got our part. Now we do need to do some grinding. Another reason it would have been nice to do this in the lathe is all we would have to grind is a little bit of relief right below that cutting edge because the tool itself would be held stationary. So that's the only area of rubbing I have to worry about. Now that we're gonna actually turn it in the mill like so, I've gotta grind back the rest of it, which is easy to do, but all else equal, I'd rather do less grinding like this and it's gonna look a little sloppy. Now, when it comes to the grinding up here, this is the trade-off and, and there, I'm sure there are better ways to do this. My focus is let's get it done um, and learn. I welcome comments and suggestions and improvements below. Um, the real test will be in here in a minute when we go put it in the uh, mill. But I put some Sharpie right here and let's just make sure we, we don't touch that, and then that way we won't be cutting into our actual turned profile geometry. All right, last thing I wanna do before we try this out is I've got a set of these diamond files. These are actually great to ha have around the shop. We're gonna take the purple one, which is medium, and we're gonna file this edge, just keeping it flat as we can to try to make sure we have a sharp cutting edge right there. My buddy Dale Derry on Metalworking Tips and Tricks just put out an awesome video on how to easily sharpen regular metal cutting files. I had no idea it was potentially this simple. Looks like in the comments it may not last, you know, you can't do it dozens of times, but nevertheless, I would definitely check out Dale's video. I really enjoyed that. All right, let's give her a shot. Here goes nothing.
threading test. We have to run the lathe in reverse. It worked. We hit it with a scotch bright wheel real quick just to clean up some of the burrs on it. But man, I can't help but think I wish we could do this in the lathe. And we may still give it a try because that single point um, non-interrupted cut, I think, is going to be so much smoother. On the other hand, I think it still worked. I mean, we've got a pretty decent, gosh, it could be so much better. But the real question is, does it fit? Let's go take a look. Here she is. Let's open the uh, fuel door. Taking the wimp strategy here with a test piece. The big moment. It's gonna work. Awesome. Now we can make the real thing. In one of the most disappointing developments this year, uh, I've learned that the same thing also fits in a GMC 2500 HD diesel pickup truck, uh, which means in theory, I could do remaining tests here. Uh, this is Jared's truck, but uh, it's much more fun to go play with the Porsche. So much nicer. Oh my gosh. Holy cow, this is the way to do it. This is the way to do it. to do it.